you find some people who think that the Prophet Wasallam was sent only to people of dark complexion, colored people. Whether, I mean, for instance, whether they are Arab or people from Africa or people from India, but people of dark complexion. And they feel that, for instance, that Muhammad Wasallam was not sent to the white people, to the Europeans. This is a very common belief amongst many people from European descent. There are those who believe that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, but do not understand that Muhammad is their messenger. So they feel that they are following Jesus and you're following Muhammad and that's okay. There's no difference. This is also incorrect. It is important that every single human being know and understand that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to every single human being from now until the day of judgment. That all the doors leading to paradise, all the doors leading to Allah's pleasure are closed except for this one door, this one path, that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And likewise, all ways to being govern themselves, all laws, all conduct, all kinds of behavior, what's right and what's wrong, what's permissible, what's impermissible, what's lawful, what is forbidden, all system of belief or practice or judgment is only the correct one and the only one accepted and the only one to be allowed to exist publicly and manifest itself is that of Muhammad This is a message that needs to be brought to every single human being on earth because Allah has sent Muhammad to these people also not just only to us who were Muslims for centuries, in the sense our families and our grandparents and so forth. The second matter is that we must believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet sent to humanity. Not only was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent to all of human beings, so one cannot adopt a way or a, or a, a creed or a law outside of his, but likewise, there is no law or creed or way or belief which will come after his to abrogate his way. Because he is the final prophet. And his revelation is the final revelation. As the Prophet ﷺ, uh, has said, or as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, uh, that Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, meaning he's not the father of any person here, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the Prophet. The Prophet and Nabi Yeen the final prophet and messenger. And this is something that many people do not understand. There are many people who have claimed prophethood after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the Hadith, uh, reported by Abu Dawood, that before the last hour, before the Day of Judgment, there will be great liars, so beware of them. Another Hadith says there will be 30 liars. And the Prophet ﷺ has said, and the line of prophethood, a prophet, is closed with me as reported in Sahih Muslim. In North America itself, you find three groups of people who believe that Muhammad ﷺ is a messenger of Allah, but do not believe that he's the final messenger of Allah. We know, for instance, that the majority of the people of North America, the United States and Canada, do not believe that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah, right? Because the majority of them are Christians and Jews and so forth. So the overwhelming people of North America, you know, maybe three, four hundred million people who live in North America, do not believe that Muhammad Sallallahu is initially a messenger. And they do not believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was sent to them in the first place. So there are three groups of people which say that Muhammad is a messenger, they believe in that, and was sent to them, but they believe somebody was sent after them. And this is, of course, the nation of Islam, the followers of Louis Farrakhan, who say that Elijah Fool was a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and likewise the Qadiani or the Ahmadi, who claim that Ghulam Ahmed, who lived in India about a hundred years ago, was a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and likewise Rashad Khalifa's followers, or Submissive International, who believe that Rashad Khalifa who lived in uh, Arizona a few years ago, who was killed, uh, is a prophet after the Prophet Sallallahu Three groups of people. And this is the second matter which we must understand when we say Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And he was sent to all people, 
and also that he is the final messenger. What is the third matter that we must believe in? Well, the third matter is that the Prophet ﷺ came with two revelations. Not one revelation, but two revelations. He came with a book, which is the literal words of Allah, the Qur'an. And it's the book of Allah. It's the actual words which Allah literally spoke. And Allah sent to the angel Jibreel, Gabriel to the Prophet Muhammad And he came with a second revelation, which is the explanation of that Qur'an. And that's what we refer to as the Prophet Sunnah. And Allah in the Qur'an calls it the wisdom, and hikmah And it is also a revelation from Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَنْسِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ That he does not speak of his own desire. And whatever the Prophet ﷺ says, is not his, of his own desire. It's not something that he just made up, or he just decided to say it this way. But it's a revelation sent to him. And that is why the earliest Muslims used to say that the Sunnah, Jibreel, the angel Gabriel, would cover the Sunnah and teach it to the Prophet Muhammad just like he came with the Qur'an in front of the Prophet Muhammad What is the difference? That the Qur'an is the words of Allah. And so therefore it is an act of worship to recite it. It's an act of worship because these are the words of our Lord. There's a special quality to these words because they're the words of the Creator of the universe. But the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the words of a human being. And so therefore the meanings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the words are from a man like us. And so therefore there's no act of worship in actually reciting the words, merely by reciting them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this in the Quran. He has told us about these two uh, revelations uh, in the verse where he says, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ وَالْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ It is he who has sent among the illiterate, meaning the Arabs, a messenger from themselves. He was an Arab like them. They knew his tribe. He was from the Banu Hashim, which is from the tribe of Quraysh. They knew who he was. مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ What did this messenger do? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He would recite unto them Allah's verses. He would say to them, Allah said to you such and such. We find this in the Qur'an, where Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, say, قُلْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَيْهِ Say, Allah is one, the only, and so forth and so on. And also, when you him, He purifies them from their sins. Because they were in ignorance, they were in sin, they were in shirk, they were in disbelief. And he purifies them because they followed him. So they left sinfulness, they left shirk, they left disbelief, they left all these evils. And then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al kitaba wal hikmah. And he teaches them the book, that is the Quran, and he teaches them the hikmah, the sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the prophets wives that they recite or mention that which is said in their household from the book and from the wisdom. So the Prophet Sallallahu came with two revelations. And he said himself that verily I have been given the Qur'an and something equal to it, meaning the Sunnah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said they will never be separated until they return back to me on al hawl or the water, the big basin of water which is given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment, this reservoir. Meaning that the Qur'an and the Sunnah are inseparable until the Day of Judgment. 